Just Lou, we've got some new science stuff here in the uh, garage laboratory. I've got a small vacuum pump. This is kind of typically used for automotive refrigeration purposes. It's kind of neat. Got it connected by this tube to this plate with a rubber mat on the top of it. And that little hole is where we'll suck all the air out. We're going to do some experiments in vacuum and see how vacuum affects different things. One of the first experiments we're going to try is what does vacuum have, uh, impact does vacuum have on the boiling point of water? So I've got a small glass of water here. And I'm going to cover it with my bell jar. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but in your car you have a radiator. And that radiator typically um, has a pressure cap on the top of it. And that cap is there specifically to raise the pressure inside your cooling system. When you raise the pressure in a cooling system, it increases the boiling point of water. So the water can actually get hotter than 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees centigrade and not boil. So let's find out what happens to water when you lower the pressure. Do you think it'll boil easier? Maybe at room temperature? Let's see. There it goes. It's about 80 degrees in my garage, and this water is literally boiling. Pretty neat. When you lower the pressure, it actually decreases the boiling point of water. As uh, Mrs. Lou just Lou discovered, at altitude, things cook differently. But we won't talk about that right now. It's a sore subject. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. And watch when I release the pressure or release the vacuum. I can't. Well, I can try to pick this up, but the whole plate lifts up. So I've got to release the vacuum, and when I do, it's going to change phase very rapidly and make a mess <laughs> when the vacuum releases. But at least now I can get my top off, and if my lovely video assistant could hand me that towel over there. Thank you. Handy person to have around. We'll just clean up a little bit here. It's the fun thing about experiments, you never know what's going to happen. So now we're going to see, and this is a classic, and I think everybody does this one at one point or another. We don't need this water anymore, so safely dispose of it. But I will use this to support this little balloon. Oh, we got to adjust it so a smiley face shows. There we go. So let's see what happens to this balloon when we remove the pressure. So I'm going to start the vacuum pump again. You get a really, really creepy looking blob-like balloon. <laughs> starts flowing down the side. Any of you early science fiction fans will recognize a movie called The Blob. So what we're doing is removing the pressure from around this balloon, the 14 pounds per square inch that's almost always there, and the air in the balloon is expanding. So let's go ahead and shut this off. We'll release the pressure once again. Maybe not make such a mess this time. And the balloon drops right down into the glass. Pretty neat. So, for our last experiment, still making a mess here. We're going to take some marshmallows. And these are happy little marshmallows. But what makes these so light and fluffy is they're full of air pockets. Thousands and thousands and thousands of little air pockets. So we're going to see what happens to these guys. We'll call this
Three Stooges, Larry Curley and Shemp there. And we'll see what happens when we reduce the pressure on them. Who knew you could get a marshmallow that big? Creepy. Now they're starting to shrink because the air pockets are literally exploding through the candy. We'll go ahead and shut the pressure off. Shut the vacuum off again. Let's see if we can remove this pressure. Or vacuum. It's holding up pretty tight. <laughs> and then they kind of shrink and become desiccated. They are really not something I'd want to eat. Pretty gross. But thanks everybody. That's uh, our new vacuum chamber. Enjoy having time with you. Bye.